Out of the edge. Out of the edge. <laughs> and it, they, there's a lot of people who have photoshopped it to d- have it just say out of the edge. And out of the, yeah, I know. I appreciate <laughs> I <love that>. it. <laughs> but um, the other main gimmick with Shadow is they added swearing for no reason. Hell yeah. <laughs> like Cause, Sonic and Because it's Karen edgy, just... Bill. It's out of the edge. You I know. Swear. But there's like so many random points where they're just like, like damn it <laughs> or like I'll send you to hell <laughs> it's like the most juvenile swears wait, too it's wait like, does Shadow say fuck no 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 they don't go that far damn it it's like damn it why not <laughs> said, why not why like Shadow because it would get an M rating and no they wanted a T rating not an M rating it should have been an M it's Shadow not even it's, Shadow should have said fuck by, by border but there's fan fiction for that Alex ew I but, don't um, know. Yeah. but um, <laughs> by modern standards, th- this game's borderline E10. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to the Gaming and Collecting Podcast. On this special 25th episode of the Gaming and Collecting Podcast. We are going to be taking a look at Sega's iconic mascot franchise, Sonic the Hedgehog, which just recently hit its 30th anniversary. Kind of crazy thinking about it. But anyways, we're going to be just kind of discussing our earliest days with the franchise and some of our memories playing all the different games through the ups and the downs and the ups and the downs that this wonderful franchise has been through over the course of its 30-year run. When it was guys... Once again, thanks for joining us as we discuss the games that shaped us. So, how you been? I've been alright. I think this week went by pretty quickly. Um, it could have been worse. Yeah, how are you been? Um, well, I worked a half day today. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, well, so let's. So my story from last week. Mhm. So we didn't have oil. I didn't get oil for the machines in until Thursday. Oh no! And it showed up at like one o'clock on a Thursday. Oh no! And we normally leave at three. So yeah. basically, Thursday like afternoon, I basically. My goal was, I'm going to get these things running, get everything back up and going. Yep. By the time I got them running, it was already, like, four, so I said, screw it, I'm just going to work late tonight, and I'm going to take a half tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> so I worked till seven. Yep. I just did a day and a half, and then took half day today. Huh. Well, so that's that nice. Good. I'm glad you got the thing up and running. That's good. Yeah. I got to leave Thank early God. today. Yeah. That was I, nice. I got to leave. But it was a... It, I don't know about you, but it's been, like, downpouring and thundering and lightning, like, every day this week. And as I was leaving work, it was, like, the pinnacle of downpouring. And I have to go through a construction zone every day. And, of course, it's that rain where you can't even see. So I'm uh-huh. trying to go through construction, and I just can't even freaking see. It was horrible. So it ended yep. up... I ended up getting home at, like, it took me, like, an hour to get home. But, oh, well, I still got to leave early. Woo! (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I went to the, I had to stop at the mall after I got out to get comics. And then I went to GameStop, picked up a couple games. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then I went to Best Buy to see if they had any anime on sale, but they didn't. Uh Nothing good, anyways. Well, have you been watching anything recently besides Fruits Baskets? Because that is now over. No, I've, all I've really watched is I finished Fruit Baskets. It's over now. The oh. ending made me sad. Well, I binged uh, Fire Force Season 2 in about two days. I could tell because when I was using the funny app, it was always <laughs> either it was either always Fruit Baskets or Fire Force or One Piece because you have a problem. Yeah. Hey, they're they're releasing new dubbed episodes on the sixth. 
Yep. <laughs> All the fans were like on Twitter were commenting on their posts and being like, Where is the dub? Where is the dub? It was really yep. funny. Oh, but now that I finished Fire Force, I started rewatching the uh the Rising of the Shield Hero show. Mm-hmm. And that's a good show. I recommend. I didn't really so like Fire Force season two. No. It was, I mean, like, it's not that I hated it, but I just was like, meh. It wasn't then, like... Then f- finish Fruit Baskets. <laughs> I I mean, I could, but I could watch Shield Hero. <laughs> you're almost... I, you're, <laughs> you have, like, a season left. I, I know, but I have to be in the mood to watch and that. And season 13 goes I, quick. I, I, I mean, just, season, season 3 goes I really have, quick. I have to be in the mood to watch it. It's a depressing show. I have to be depressed to watch it. I'm not depressed right now, so I can't watch it. <laughs> what an odd choice. <laughs> oh, I have another adventure story. Well, first, what are you drinking? I'm drinking a... Original Sin Pineapple Haze Cider. I think I've drank this on the podcast before, but I got it again from my favorite grocery store, Stu Leonard's. <laughs> not, 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 not sponsored. <laughs> it's not sponsored. We, I mean, like, we also said the name of our drinks, which isn't sponsored. <laughs> but if you haven't heard of Stu Leonard's, it's a, it's a magical place. <laughs> it's a grocery store, but it's not just a grocery store. It has a liquor store that's just better than most liquor stores, so I, I get my alcohol there. And, funny story, they have a membership program, but it's just for the liquor store. <laughs> it's not for the actual are, grocery. Are, are, you, like, are it's you a for, member? <laughs> yeah, I, I signed up. <laughs> it's new. Of course. <laughs> of course. It's right by my work. I can just go after work and pick up some groceries yeah. and some... As your text, as your text thing says, your phone's turning you into an alcoholic. Uh, no, no, no! What are you drinking? <laughs> uh, I, I'm drinking a Crook and Marker organic super grain alcohol. Oh. I think it's a sel- it, It's definitely a seltzer. Yep. I grabbed it randomly. It's is pretty it? good. Oh, okay. it's only eighty calories. Oh, mine is. 180 calories. <laughs> but I only drink like one a night, so. Yep. Oh, boy. So, are you going to tell the audience about your new hobby? <laughs> uh, it's not a hobby. It was a. It was an endeavor. I wanted to see, and then I bought something. <laughs> so okay. I, went, I went to a store. I think it was called Comics and Collectibles. Uh, I think that's what it was, and I found it. And I found some One Piece figures. <laughs> they also had some JoJo's figures. Well, they had a sp- one JoJo's figure, but they had multiples of it. And it, I was tempted, but I really didn't need like a. It was like a two foot tall JoJo, and I was like, I don't know if I need that. But so instead, I got a One Piece figure. I got well, it's three, but they're like a set, you know. So it's I'm, I'm not that crazy yet, uh, but. As <laughs> I have it in my hand as we speak. <laughs> but there there are three it's uh it's Ace, Luffy, and Sabo, and it's from um a comic spin-off where basically they take one of the it was like a comic spin-off um from Oda the Mega Cow. Um and he basically took one of the arcs and spun it as a what if scenario and they made figures for it, and it, they're really cute. So I, I got it. <laughs> I couldn't help it. So, so she's she's taken that one further step to full weebdom now. No, no, no. I'm not gonna get like I'm not gonna buy like everyone I see. I'm not gonna be like you and become a collector. I just bought it because it's a very nice figure set. That was it's that like people. The... That was an attack. <laughs> <laughs> I intended attack. it to be an attack. That was oh, an attack on my oh. lifestyle. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen like that meme. I think it's like Princess Leia, and then um, what was it like Luke? Was it Luke Skywalker? I said oh, it you to you a while the, ago. What you mean the you mean the Anakin and Padme the, one? Yeah, the, the Anakin and Padme one. That's it. Um, where it's like uh, I think it said like so. Oh, you bought another game. 
And then he's like, no, the Anakin says, I bought another video game. And then uh, Padme says, you're going to play it, right? And then it's like, it's just the stare. And she's like, you're going to play it, right? <laughs> and yeah. he was personally offended by it. And I was glad because I was it trying to. It was a personal to, attack. I was. I was trying to attack you. Just, just now, I was also trying to attack you. That's what we do. We're brother and sister. <laughs> it's, you attacked every game collector out there right there. Yep. It is a but lifestyle. You, you gotta admit, that's pretty funny, though. <laughs> we'll get to it at some point. <laughs> oh, boy. Alright. Anything else you want to add about your week? Um... Uh, no, not really. I mean, other than this is episode 25. Woo! <laughs> it's like 25. It's like, it's a milestone, but it's also not really worth celebrating. So it's just it's kind a, of, it's an... It's 25, just like me. Am I 25? Yes, you're 25. Okay, I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> I mean, I don't count last year, but you still, it still happens, so... Yep. Well, technically, I'm... <laughs> mm. Mm. How old am I? I'm five? Yeah. Five? It, I don't Probably. I don't know. Wait. One, two, three, four. For, any, five, for six, anybody seven, who's seven, wondering, eight. she's a leap year baby, so okay. she only. her She's technically like five or something. You don't I'm, have to. I'm six! Uh, okay, whatever. Oh! <laughs> Wait, am I? I don't. I'm having a laugh day. I'm having a midlife crisis. <laughs> oh, nobody cares. When you're trying well, anyway. to do math on on command, like it's when you can't do math. So, so anyways, <laughs> anyways, you might be 25, and yes. I might be 26. But you know who's 30? Sonic. Yeah, yeah. So. Sega's Sonic the Hedgehog turned 30 recently. That's crazy. I, Sonic is older I, than I, us. Alex, I remember in high, I still remember my junior year of high school when he turned uh, 25. Yep. No, not not 25, when he turned 20. Because yep. um, that was when... Generations came out, right? Yeah. I, I remember the day because I was like so hyped for it. Yep. But anyways, yeah. we're Our topic for this episode is actually... We're going to talk about Sonic because... Oh boy, this franchise has quite the history. It has its ups, it has its downs, it has its, its downs. Ups. It has downs, its downs. downs. It has its ups. It has its, it's torpedoed into the ground. The ground. <laughs> oh, it has boy. it in the core of the earth. <laughs> it, it's it's died so many times and come back because you can't kill the blue fucker. <laughs> nope, he always comes back. He always does. Oh. No matter what Sega does, <laughs> they'll never kill him. Nope, they never will, cause he makes money. <laughs> well, Doesn't even every... matter if the game is shit; he still makes money. <laughs> cause for every failure, they always cause for every five failures, they always find one success. Yep. <laughs> now, now this isn't gonna be. L- let's be real here. This isn't gonna be an entire podcast just shitting on Sonic. No, we're no, gonna no. shit on Sonic every now and then because we're we're longtime fans. Yep. We've been through hell. <laughs> yep. But we'll also appreciate the moments that were very good. Yeah. Well, I, I want to preface. We're fans of the series, but... Yeah. But everyone fan, shit. Even everyone fans shit. have to admit, this series ain't perfect. No. <laughs> no. So, anyways, our histories with Sonic is actually kind of peculiar. <laughs> so... My earliest memory with Sonic was actually... You remember the old daycare we used to be in? Uh, yeah, I think so. The one, it was, like, the close one after, to our house, right? Yeah, it was because after school, because we had no... No one was home. We had to stay at this daycare because we day- weren't allowed to be home alone at the time. Yeah, because we were only and children. It was hell, personally. Like, it wasn't a fun time at all, but... Um, for what it's worth... They had a PC and PC games, uh. and believe it or believe it or not, one of the games on that PC was actually the Sonic and Knuckles collection, which was uh. a port of Sonic Three and Knuckles to the PC, 
And I always remember play, playing that every now and then when it was functioning, because, my God, that computer, I swear to God, was, like, either it worked or it didn't work. <laughs> yep. But, um, as a... Oh, God, we couldn't have... We were under, under, like, in our, like... Still in the single digits by that point, so... As a young kid, I thought Sonic 3 looked amazing. Yep. <laughs> it's funny, though, because back in the... My brain... The way the brain plays tricks you, I thought it looked a lot more impressive then than, than it... I mean, it's not a bad-looking oh, yeah. game by any standards, but I thought it looked, at, like, futuristic then, even though at oh, that yeah. point it was, like, probably... It was over ten years old, probably. Yep. No, I feel like that kind of happens with everything. Like, you look back... Or it's just, like, when you... It happens a lot, like, when you eat food, and then you order something, you like... You order, like, chicken nuggets, and you're like, when were these so small? Like, but... <laughs> They weren't. I thought you were like, gonna say when you eat when you eat food and you you remember it being really good and you buy it again it tastes like shit. <laughs> well, that too, yeah. Sometimes. Well, because things like I don't know your memory, your taste buds change, your memory changes, things change, you change. That's life. Getting. Yep. <laughs> Psychology. But, <something>. yeah. So <laughs> that was. It, it's funny though because that was like my only real experience with a Sonic game for like years. Because we were PlayStation kids, and yep. let me tell you well, let me tell you about the PlayStation. If you were a PlayStation owner, like, and you didn't have any other system, and yep. you wanted to be a Sonic fan, you got a raw deal for a very long time. <laughs> yep. Because literally the first Sonic game we actually physically owned <laughs> was fucking Sonic 06. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, and at the time, a... and this was PS3 launch, so I had literally three games to play. Yep. Motorstorm, mm -hmm. Lego Star Wars, and yep. Sonic 06. Yep. Ugh. And at the time, I had I didn't know any better, and I thought it was okay. <laughs> but oh, we'll get to funny. that in a we'll get to that a little bit later. Yep. So what was your first real memory with Sonic? My first... So my first real memory with Sonic was not a game, but it was the anime. I'm putting quotation marks around it because I, I don't really know if people consider it an anime or not. But it was Sonic X, the TV show. <laughs> the horrible yeah, TV anime. show of Chris Thorndike. Well, I don't know. People... people. It was, made, it, it was made in Japan, so it's an anime. Yeah. And, uh... Oh boy, that was my like first introduction to Sonic. Because I believe, like most animes that I watch, it was on YouTube and I could watch it. And Well, then it was on TV like all the time. I don't remember ever watching it on TV, though. I don't think I ever I did. did. I, I didn't. I, did. I watched it on YouTube. Because at the time, re-uploading was so easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, those were our earliest memories, but... Let's be real. They weren't the greatest memories. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, if we want to go back, I'd say we should start with the actual series beginnings. Yep. With, so, Sonic was the creation of Sega because they needed a, like, they needed a Mario, basically. Yeah, Because their needed mascot, a mascot at the time, their mascot at the time was Alex Kidd who had a bunch of games and none of they I mean they weren't bad games the ones that were actually designed as Alex Kidd games but they weren't like this like you needed to own the system kind yeah. of games they weren't Mario so, yeah or even like Mega Man or like any of the other mascots basically everything that Nintendo had yeah Sega needed something <laughs> so basically they got a team of people together, and the, the most notable... It, it, it was basically a team that would eventually become Sonic Team. Yep. That we know have today. And the, the notables were uh, programmer Yuji Naka and artist and designer uh, Naoto Ushima, who had actually designed Sonic's like, design and character. And I know he was famously... His blue color came from, obviously, to match the Sega logo. Yep. And his shoes were inspired by Michael Jackson because of the belt on the side. <laughs> yep. And, San and Santa Claus because red and white. Yep. 
and the reason he had and i guess he had a couple like different designs because originally there was like a rabbit was going to be like a proposed idea oh there was um an armadillo which later became uh, um the character mighty the armadillo yep uh sonic also like had a girlfriend early on that was a human oh <laughs> it, and he was in a rock band <laughs> like, yeah, Wait. the early Sonic days were. Re- look up early Sonic concept stuff. It, it's. I kind of want to see this. Oh, like... and the greatest thing ever is one of the proposed character designs was like a Theodore Roosevelt-looking guy in pajamas <laughs> that ended what? up becoming the basis for Doctor Eggman. Oh my god! Oh wait! Oh my god! I think I found the bunny. Yeah, there's the rabbit. There's a rabbit. Did he um, have like a yellow a little bow tie or something? I think so. It's been a while oh, since I've looked it up. What's his girlfriend blonde? Yeah. And in like in a red band, dress? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. These yep. were all concepts that were scrapped very early on. Oh my because god. Because eventually... The, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these are really funny to look at. <laughs> you know what's funny though? A lot of the these things that when you think about it are really ironic when you get when we get to later stuff in the series. Oh yeah, no, I'm like cuz as soon as you said like some of the things I was like, "Oh, wait a minute. That sounds familiar." Oh mm-hmm. my god. That's so free. Oh. What the hell? Oh, was he a person at one point? No, no. Now you're going too far down the rabbit hole. Oh, okay. <laughs> you need to back away. <laughs> back away. <laughs> I can't, I can't stop! No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> Alright, so, close this window. Eventually, <laughs> eventually, eventually, Sega, the team settled with the Hedgehog, and Sonic 1 was designed, and the whole gimmick behind Sonic 1 was, Sonic was supposed to be, like, the edgy, like, basically, he was supposed to be the, like, anti-Mario anti Mario in, like, every way. Mm-hmm. He was basically, he's basically the epitome of the 90s. Like, he was super edgy, and his gameplay was notable because, believe it or not, Sonic wasn't actually a launch title for the Genesis. Because no. the Genesis had already been out for a couple of years, because it came out in, like, 89, I think. Oh, wow. And Sonic didn't didn't make his debut until 91. Huh. So the Genesis already had a decent, like, player base by that point. Sonic was just kind of, like, the killer app that Sega needed. Because Sonic... Yeah came out around the same time as Mario World and the Super Nintendo was already oh, wow. out so they couldn't even use like the whole graphics at that point. Yeah. But what Sonic's key thing was the Genesis and Super Nintendo is probably the most fascinating um console war of all time just because yeah, the Super Nintendo was technologically a superior system in pretty much mm-hmm. every way, but the Genesis wasn't a slouch by any means either. Yeah. And they really could compete with each other, even though the, the the spec differences were there. Yep. But one of the Genesis's only real superior strengths over the Super Nintendo was its processor was notably faster. Mm-hmm. And they Sega took that Sonic Team took that get that into account, and basically the the gimmick with Sonic is he's fast. Yes. And all the levels are designed around momentum, and like. Mm-hmm building up speed to get through the levels fast. Although, believe it or not, Yuji Naka actually thought um, Sonic 1, he was too fast. So Sonic actually has a speed cap in Sonic oh, 1 that really? keeps him slowed down. <laughs> That's funny. And Sonic 1 is a really good game, mm-hmm. although it is admittedly aged a bit. Because yeah. in terms of level design, it's a bit sporadic like mm-hmm. green hill zone is iconic like everybody everybody's oh, played yeah. green hill zone everyone knows the music yep but then you get to the next zone which is i believe marble zone i think it's mm-hmm. been a while but that's very slow and more platformy mm-hmm. and the levels kind of there's only two real speed based levels a little more it's more not a super fast paced game like you'd think yep but it did well enough that obviously a sequel was made. And what was cool about the sequel was, well, the original was made by Sonic Team in Japan. <laughs> the majority of like the staff, like Yuji Naka and a bunch of staff, later went to America mm. to work with the Sega, to work with the Sega Technical Institute. Yep. And they began working on the sequel, Sonic Two. 
Yep. But while they were working on Sonic 2, the rest of Sonic Team, like including Naoto Oshima, were actually working on another Sonic game called Sonic yep. CD, which was going to be a Sonic title for the upcoming Sega CD add-on. Mm-hmm. So that's why those two games have very distinct differences. It's another reason also why Sonic CD is very much feels like a more... It, it feels more built off of Sonic 1 as opposed to yep. Sonic 2, which feels like a true update. Yeah. Because both featured similar ideas. Like, both had the spin dash. In- mm-hmm. Introduced the spin dash. But the spin dash in Sonic CD is very stiff and not fun to use. Meanwhile, the one in Sonic 2 that became the de facto speed spin dash is, like, super quick and is a key part of the game because Sonic 2 is probably... It's in a lot of... In terms of classic Sonic fans, that is usually their number one, like, the best game in the entire series. Mm-hmm. And most Sonic fans will always punt, like point to that one just because it, it's super fast, like the speed cap was gone, it introduced uh, Tails to the uh, series, yep. full name Miles Tails Per Hour <laughs> get the, get the, get Miles the joke Miles Per Hour ha, ha, yeah ha. <laughs> um, and it features some of the most iconic levels and just like in insane music like the original sound, Sonic's so something about the Sonic series that basically became very established early on was the music. Mm-hmm. Like we brought this up in the origin in like the Sonic in the music podcast we did that Sonic music defines a Sonic game basically. Yep. It's one it's and the, the be- it's honestly the best parts of the games most of the time. Of a lot of some of the Sonic games it is the best part of the game. Yeah. But it's one of the best parts or in some cases, it is the very best Yeah, part. But, um, the first two Sonic games actually were composed by, um, a actual, an out, outside composer named, uh, Masato Nakamura, who is a member of the Japanese J-pop band Dreams Come True. Oh, that's fun. But he actually composed, like, the soundtracks to the first two Sonic games. Huh. And that is actually one of the reasons why Sega has to pay licensing fees to use Green the music Hellzone from those games. And like, oh, because they have to because license. He's, yeah, so Sega has to license. Because writer's um, credit. Yeah. Yeah, like to, Sega can't use Green Hill Zone, <laughs> or wow. like the original cla- or the original classic um, like Sonic intro music. Huh. Because um, it's all owned by um, uh, Nakamura. Wow. Didn't they now, use Sonic, it though in um in Sonic uh what's it called Sonic Generations? Well, yeah, they've they've paid they can pay licensing. Oh, they okay, paid him yeah. the, They'll pay him the licensing fee, like, because obviously Green Hill Zones made reappearances over, yeah, over the years in different games. But what's interesting with it's really fascinating looking at Sonic CD versus Sonic Two, because Sonic CD was more notable because it, it obviously it. Sonic CD was supposed to showcase the Sega CD, and it's arguably one of the best games on the Sega CD. Yep. Which isn't saying much, because the Sega CD's library is kind of all over the place. Mm-hmm. But Sonic CD was notable because it introduced Amy Rose to the series. Ah! And Wasn't it had, she like, like full... a... It was a very different character design, though, right? Yeah, she well, she was younger, and she was... Still in love with Sonic. And she gets. Oh, and it also introduced Metal Sonic to the series. Yeah, the that's what major, I thought. Because isn't it like. Isn't the plot in that like there's like a planet and it's like. Fa- like she's from a different planet or something? I thought I remembered seeing no, no, that no. in like a cartoon. The plot is. The plot is there is like a, a planet called Little Planet. Yes, that's. I remember it, that. It's literally a planet that was kidnapped by Eggman. Oh, yep. And Amy, there, so there's two storylines, like, the Japanese manual has its own storyline, and the U.S. manual has its own storyline. The U.S. Mm-hmm. manual refers to Amy as Sally Acorn, so let's, uh... Oh. Whoop. Yeah. That doesn't work. <laughs> no, they're not even close to the same character. No! I'm, like, looking at the pictures now, because I remember she wore, like, a little green shirt, and, like, her hair was, like, Sonic's, like, it was... Yeah. 
That's funny. But, uh, yeah, so... <laughs> um, but then after Sonic Seed, the, the American team would continue on, and they'd also work on Sonic 3. Yes. Now, Sonic 3 is a very fascinating game, mm-hmm. because it was actually split in half. Because it was too big for oh. one Genesis cartridge, and they didn't have enough time to get it to work, I guess. Or I guess it would have been too expensive to to do it the way they did. So they cut the game in half, and mm-hmm. they released Sonic 3, and then Sonic and Knuckles. Oh. And Sonic, Sonic and Knuckles uh, had this cool, like cartridge that had like another cartridge slot on top of it and it was like called the lock on cartridge yep. and you could put Sonic 3 on top of it look, click them oh. together and that's and how you'd play. play the full Sonic Sonic 3 and Knuckles <laughs> that's cool how they were I mean like that's interesting for the time how they worked around it that's interesting but what's cool is the way that they sold to make this like a obviously not just a we're selling you one game for the price of two kind of thing mm-hmm. they also made it so you could take the Sonic uh, a Knuckles cartridge and put Sonic 2 on and it, when you do that then you can play Sonic 2 as the new character from Sonic 3 Knuckles ah oh, that's cool and it changes the game a bit because Knuckles' gameplay is different uh, from Sonic w- wasn't designed around Sonic 2 so it makes the game slightly harder yeah in some aspects huh. and then um, if you plug it into Sonic 1 because of palette issues, they couldn't put Knuckles into Sonic 1, yeah. even though ROM hackers have done it later but on. But at the time, what, they couldn't. But what Sonic um, 1 does is, so- basically, if you put any non-Sonic game cartridge into Sonic and Knuckles, mm-hmm. it would come up with a screen that says, no way, no way, and it just plays like the special stage or, or special, one of the... Th- the themes from Sonic 3 in the background. Yep. But if you press, I think it's like you press all the face buttons, it lets you play the mini, like the special stages from Sonic um, huh. 3, Blue Sphere. But yep. if you put Sonic 1 in, yep. it unlocks the full Blue Sphere game, which, ha- which has levels that go up to like the millions. Like there is oh, millions wow. of different combinations you can get. Wow. Like it's it's nuts. That's interesting. But it was a really cool idea. And Sonic 3... So, I know Sonic 2 is usually considered the definitive, like, classic Sonic title. Mm-hmm. To me, I always, I was always a bigger fan of Sonic 3. Yeah. Because Sonic 3 is just, like, it looks the best, it has some of the best levels, the graphics are amazing, mm-hmm. so much content, like, all three, you, get, you can play as Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, they all have their own, like, special, like, super forms added... Um, and the soundtrack. This so. Sonic Three is kind of interesting. It's never been officially confirmed, although it's basically been confirmed. It's so Sonic Three. Be- Nakamura didn't come back to do the soundtrack for Sonic Three. Mm-hmm. And originally, Sega was trying to get Michael Jackson to do the soundtrack. Oh my god! <laughs> and it's never officially been confirmed, and at this point, it probably never will be Mm -hmm. due to some recent events and stuff but um that we're not going to get into but um yeah so there are a couple songs in Sonic 3 Mm -hmm. that are very distinct Lee Michael Jackson songs oh wow like the theme music for Carnival Night yep is is basically just uh is is jam huh and the ending theme for just Sonic 3 itself, like yep. without Sonic and Knuckles plugged into it, yep. is literally, it's literally Strangers in Moscow. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> like, it's like almost note for note. Like, it's insane. But the reason why I say I- I'm convinced that he definitely had some work on this, because mm-hmm. the rumor is the reason why he he dropped the project was because he didn't like the Genesis' sound card, supposedly. Although yep. there's also rumors it had to do with the scandals, and, and yeah, just a bunch of... It, we'll never know. Yeah. My th- my theory, though, of why I believe he definitely was involved at one point mm-hmm. is when you plug in Sonic 3 into Sonic and & Knuckles, 
yeah. bunch of the tracks get overridden mm -hmm. and replaced with other music. Huh. And then another fascinating thing is going back to where we started, that PC Sonic and Knuckles collection. Yep. Three of the three of the zone tracks, Carnival Night, Ice Cap, and Launch Base, all mm -hmm. have their music replaced. Yep. With completely original tracks, like huh. that are only in that PC version. So I'm convinced that <laughs> there's probably more going on there. Yeah. Especially because those are the tracks that are very Michael Jackson esque. Yeah, that's funny. I'm gonna have to take a listen to those after listen, the podcast. So, it's listen to, definitely listen to the Sonic Three ending theme and Strangers in Moscow. Yeah. But also look, listen to Carnival Night and Jam. Those two are the ones that it's like whoa. Okay. But um. Send me yeah, those so, in the in the chat after, cause I I want to look those yeah, up, I'll, but I'll, I won't I'll, remember. I'll track those down, but um. Yeah. So. Anyways, after, while the the main console Sonic games are, are going on, mm -hmm. the Game Gear was also released. Yes. And there was a number of Sonic titles for the Game Gear as well. Mm -hmm. Now, there was Sonic 1 and 2, which were basically just 8-bit recreate. They weren't recreations. They were original games. They weren't made by Sonic Team. They were made by outside companies. Oh, okay. But um, the Sonic... Sonic 1 for Game Gear, which was also... Also, a lot of these were also made for the Master System. Mm-hmm. So they were kind of like double console versions. Huh. But the first two were Sonic 1 and 2, and they were basically just their own interpretations of those games. Then there was Sonic Chaos, and then Sonic Triple Trouble. Yep. And Triple Trouble had Fang the Sniper in it, or Knack the Weasel. Huh. But, um... I have no idea also, who that is. No. Uh, you'd have to play it to know. Huh. But, um, there was also Sonic Drift. <laughs> Ooh! One of the first Sonic racers. <laughs> Why it's am I in very... a car? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Good times. And then, by this point, Sonic was a freaking icon. Yep. Like, he was, like, one of the first video game characters to appear in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Oh, really? Yeah, and his balloon popped. Oh, tragic. Well, he yeah. was a he, he was a hedgehog, and he had little quills. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, Sonic was in the Macy's Day Parade. He was everywhere. He had multiple cartoons, because there was... By this point, we had Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, which was mm -hmm. a very comedic... Um, it was a very comedic... Um, that's like the one that had kind of... the Sonic, like, Sonic yeah, okay. Says. Yes, yeah, so like, there, that the was end. the one that had the infamous, um, the, the Sonic Says at the end. Of, and it also had the, the chicken robot and the other robot. Yep. The, and was, like, that was also the one where Eggman was, like, super, like, <laughs> goofy looking. <laughs> yeah. That's Just where that's where the threatening. That's where snooping as, you, snooping as usual came from. Yep. <laughs> you know, snooping as usual. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that Pink. meme. Yep. But um Yeah, that that show's most famous for Sonic says and the infamous uh uh Stranger Danger <laughs> thing. <laughs> Does he like uh, go like if a person ever did Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> y y everybody 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 who knows about it has seen that one. You know what's funny though is that actually influenced a lot of shows that came out after that because I remember the Sailor Moon, the Sailor Moon yeah, English yeah. dub always had a little, and Sailor Moon says at the yeah. end of it. A lot today. of shows had those. It influenced it, though, because I think that was, like, one of the first ones. Mm. <laughs> well, and then there was also, um, after Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, there was also... Undercrash? Sonic, it, it, no, no, it was just called Sonic the Hedgehog, but everyone yeah. refers to it as Sonic Set AM. Oh, okay. Because it, oh. it came out on Saturday mornings. That yep. was the one that had, like, Sally Acorn and the Freedom Fighters, and it was yep. really dark. For, Wasn't that for one some... based on the, the comic book series, No, 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 no. no. The comics were based off of that one. Oh, okay, that's funny. At first, at first. Yeah, they were influenced by them. Yeah. But, yeah, that was because it had a full-on storyline and all sorts a of A world crazy... building and... Yeah. <laughs> like, it was very popular, and it ended on a cliffhanger. Yep. I never really got into it personally, because it was... Uh, no. 
that was the point where the Sonic fan base started to get really weird. Mm. But um, yeah, furries. so by that point, by that point, furries. Sonic was. <laughs> I'm not even not even getting into that. But um, <laughs> by this you know point, it's Sonic. True. Every, yeah, but that's for, for everything. <laughs> Sonic was everywhere by this point. Yeah. Like, everywhere. And, like, spin-offs. Spin-offs were everywhere. Like, besides the four main Genesis slash Sega CD titles, you had Sonic um, Labyrinth, oh. which was, like, this isometric Sonic pinball-ish game where the gimmick was Sonic was slow. <laughs> Great, great idea. <laughs> Good um, job. You take I mean, the character it, who's fast and you make him slow. Good yeah. job. <laughs> it's, yeah, not not a great, great game at all. Wasn't there and also, like, the, a typing game? Like, there's, like, a typing Sonic game, No, no, game, you're, right? you're thinking of Mario. Oh, I thought there was a Sonic one, too. Not that I know of. Womp womp. There was Sonic Schoolhouse. I remember Maybe that. Maybe that's what I'm thinking I knew there was um, an educational game somewhere. Yeah. There was also... Uh, Tails got his own spinoff. Uh, he got two. Tails Sky Patrol, which never came out in America. Uh, it did get re-released later on, but... It, for the Game Gear. And it was like a rail shooter. Like, <laughs> side-scrolling rail... Like, shoot 'em up rail shooter. Yep. Um, it was... It's okay. You can beat it in, like, 50 minutes. Um, and then there's Tails Adventure, which was a Metroidvania-style Tails game where you... Sonic doesn't even appear. Mm-hmm. Oh! Like, that that one was pretty cool. Like, that's actually a really rare uh, Game Gear game, too. And then, of course, we also had the Genesis and Game Gear both had Sonic Spinball, which was the first of many pinball-themed Sonic things. And it's... It's okay. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it's amazing by any means, but it has some killer music. Like most and Sonic games. Also, another famous thing with Sonic was taking a game that was a Sonic and making it a Sonic game. Oh. Because we fun. also had Doctor Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Oh. Which was oh, just no. a a a reskin of the game uh, Poyo Poyo. Oh. Yep. But they just made like they basically themed it after AOSTH, and that game is brutally hard. Oh wow. Like brutally hard. Yeah, and then after after Spinball, then the last Sonic game on the Genesis, because mm-hmm. by this point, after Sonic Three, uh, the main people at from Sonic Team left Sega Technical Institute and went back to Japan to work work get ready for the Saturn. Mm-hmm. So in the meantime, Sega Technical Institute would be working on what was going to be the upcoming next main Sonic title. Yep. And it ended up... So it was going to be what eventually was going to be the cancelled Sonic Extreme. Mm Mm-hmm. Which was... It started out as a Genesis game. So this game went through, like, multiple revisions. Yep. And... Because the team could not find a direction for it. Mm-hmm. And originally, it started out as a Genesis game based off of the Sat AM show. Yep. That was like a slower paced, like stealthish kind of game. Actually, huh. there's one, tra- there's like one trailer of it, and then that got followed by then it, it moved over to the 32x. Yep. And it was like this weird 3D ish looking thing. Oh. That looked interesting. Hmm. And then that. Because the 32X was a colossal failure. Yes. Although it did have... We'll get to it in a minute, but... Yep. Um, after the 32X, then it was moved over to the Saturn. Yep. And basically, that game just was like a never-ending like spiral of depression. Oh, no. And like sadness that just... It, there's a reason why it never came out. Yeah. It just didn't... It, it just basically, didn't work. Basically, the reason it was it was officially canceled was it missed its holiday deadline. It had to be restarted like four times. Oh wow! And it was just the, like they... by the end, I know the game's director was like extremely sick and was basically told he was going to die if he didn't stop. 
Ooh. And the game's the game's programmer, she was also like ex- inst- extremely sick and was basically had to Jesus. stop. Jesus! Oh my god! They gosh. didn't. They didn't stop. They had, were trying to get the game out. Yeah, that's nuts. Yes, it just it was a mess. Like there, there's full on documentaries on YouTube explaining the whole story of Sonic Extreme. Like, wow, it, it's very depressing to listen. Like, listen to how what could have been with that game. Mm-hmm. So, because Sonic Extreme never came out, there was, in the meantime, Sega Sega was still making Sonic games themselves. Mm-hmm. Because there was the 32X did get a Sonic game. It got Knuckles Chaotix, a Knuckles spinoff. Yep. Which was actually an interpretation of another canceled Sonic game called Sonic Crackers. <laughs> Jesus, they love to cancel lot... their games. Oh, there is a lot of canceled Sonic. You could do a whole podcast on just canceled games. Oh. But um, yeah. So Sonic and so Knuckles Chaotix is basically, it's it's a side scroller. It has really pretty graphics because thirty two bits. Yep. And f- a fun soundtrack. But Knuckles Chaotix biggest gimmick was, you played as Knuckles along with the Chaotix, who would become major characters later on. <laughs> major doofy characters. Yeah, except for Mighty. Poor Mighty. He got forgotten. Oh about. yeah, he got scratched out. Well, he yeah. came back later, but we'll get to that later. But yep. um, yeah. So the whole gimmick with. Um, Knuckles Chaotix is there's like a bungee mechanic where two characters are stuck together with this like tether rope oh, and you boy. have to like kind of use them to like slingshot around levels and stuff. It's a cool game. It's really repetitive and kind of bland. Oh. And it's also womp, womp. Stu- stupidly expensive now. Yeah. Well, also, I... it's because of that and like the console. How to even play it is ridiculous. Like you have to. Oh. So you have to own a Sega Genesis, but then you also have to own a Sega 32X, and then you have to just basically jimmy them together. And... Yeah, I want to make a, a Instagram live video about hooking the 32X up at some point because my that would God, be funny. It's... Should do. You it. know what's funny? You know what's funny about Knuckles Chaotix? What? That's like board, board, complete in box. That is like borderline a two hundred dollar game now. Wow. I got it at a yard sale for twenty bucks. <laughs> Oh my god! Was it in box or was it? Oh yeah, it's it's. How the hell? Oh, okay, that person did not know what they were selling. This was also like 2015, but yeah. Even then, though, I feel like it would have been at least a hundred bucks. Nope. <laughs> Twenty Jesus, bucks. You got that for a steal. If you oh, resold yeah. that, you would make like so much freaking money. But you know what the best part was too. What? I I, di- I didn't even have a 32x at the time. <laughs> oh, that's actually great. I just great. I saw it and I was like, the collector wow. you knew, I, the collector well, no, you. I wanted one at some point, and it, I mean, it, it's Knuckles Chaotix. I mean, it's like when are you gonna see a box 32x game? Yeah. <laughs> out and about. And like the box is in good condition too. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not in the best condition, but it's still, it's. It's still in the box, which is for, something. For twenty bucks, I mean. It yeah. has the manual. That's oh my goodness, that's insane! Wow. But anyways, another um, so yeah, Knuckles Chaotix was the lone Sonic game on the 32X, but mm-hmm. because Sonic, because Sonic Extreme was canceled, Sega actually farmed out development of another Sonic game. Oh boy. To a company called um, Traveler's Tales. Oh. Um, the same people who make the Lego Star Wars, the Lego games nowadays. Yep. But um. They made they would make two Sonic games in their tenure. Yep. The first being Sonic 3D Blast, the final Sonic game on the Genesis. Yep. Now they made these they made these games in conjunction with Sonic Team, so they weren't completely alone. But yep. Sonic 3D Blast is like an isometric 3D platformer mm-hmm. with pre-rendered graphics and it, it a very distinct art style. Yep. But um, it it's. It, it controls kind of awkwardly, and it's the whole gimmick of the game is you have to collect bird like little the flickies from the series, the birds oh, okay. throughout each level, and it, it's just tedious to play. I mean, it's it's cool. It has a killer soundtrack. Actually, one of the first Sonic games to feature uh, Jun Sonoy. Oh, that's cool. As a amazing main composer, I think his first appearance was Sonic Three. Yep. But um, this was one of the first ones where he was a major composer. Mm-hmm. But. Because what well, they were making this game at the same time Sonic Extreme was going through development hell, mm-hmm. and because Sonic Extreme got canceled, Sega basically needed a Sonic game on the Saturn. Yeah. 
Yeah. So they basically just pushed um, Traveler's Tales to hastily port it over to the Saturn. Oh, okay. So the Saturn version is almost identical. It's actually slightly improved. Okay. It has much better graphics. Yep. A full-on CD quality soundtrack by Richard Jocks, who is a another name that will appear in uh, many future Sonic games. Yep. But um, his soundtrack is it's good, but I prefer the Genesis soundtrack. Yep. And the most distinct thing about the the um, Saturn version of 3D Blast is the special stages, mm-hmm. which were full 3D rendered. Yep. And they were they were basically the same as the Sonic Two ones. Mm-hmm. But they were made in 3D, and they have, like, the most killer, like, music. And they're just a spectacle. Like, they, the only reason I rec- I say that version needs to be played. Yeah. And unfortunately, Knuckles Chaotix and this version of Sonic 3D Blast have never been re-released. Huh. The only way you can play them is on their original systems. Oh, that's interesting. And it's funny, because there's a third version of 3D Blast for mm-hmm. the PC, which is interesting because it's based off of the Saturn version in terms of graphics and music but yep. it has its own special stages as well. Yeah. <laughs> that are like a cross between the Genesis version and the Saturn version. It's weird. Mm-hmm. It's super weird. But mm-hmm. anyways, so after that the Saturn the Saturn era of of classic Sonic. Mm-hmm. So because Sonic Extreme was cancelled there was no official mainline Sonic game on the system yep but we did get three spin-offs mm-hmm. the first being obviously Sonic um, Sonic 3D Blast yep. the second now is probably the most famous Sonic R oh is that the racing one? yes <laughs> With the, so Sonic R is it is a racing game also made by Traveler's Tales. It was the second and final game they made. Yep. It's a 3D racing game. It looks amazing for Saturn standards. Like, it's super deep, like, 3D graphics, full 3D. Uh, it's interesting because you actually play as, like, Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails on foot. Yep. Which was an interesting concept. Mm-hmm. The problem is the controls are very stupid. <laughs> They're garbage. Um, I mean, you can get used to them. Once you get used to them, it's fine. Yeah. It's just, oh my god, the, getting used to them. And then there's only five tracks, and like only like... Th- there's a decent amount of racers, but it's... It's not worth it. I mean, thankfully, it has been re-released on the, the Sonic Gems collection, so it's very easy to track down. Mm-hmm. But... Aside from that... Oh, it also has the, um, the famous... I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. It also has the famous... Um, soundtrack by Richard Jocks. Oh, because isn't it like all like it's all voice like voice it's acting? All Euro, it's all Euro pop. Yeah. <laughs> like, can you feel the sunshine? Does Doesn't it, it have the super sonic, sonic like racing? That? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and living in the city, you know, we have to survive. Uh, yeah. Uh, you should take anyone listening should take the time to listen to that soundtrack because <laughs> it's an experience. It's really. It is, is the most unfitting for a Sonic game ever. <laughs> yep. And then. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. And we're back. We're back. So the final Sonic game to release on the Sega Saturn was probably the most fascinating. <laughs> it was a simply a title simply called Sonic Jam. And what Sonic Jam was, was it was a compilation was, was. of Sonic's... What? It just said, uh, was, was. That's what she said. Okay. It but anyways, sounded goofy. Um, and anyways, um, Sonic Jam was essentially a compilation of Sonic's 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles. Oh, wow. Sonic CD. Yep. But, um... They were all rebuilt for the, from the ground up for the Saturn, featuring like identical graphics and gameplay, sound, everything. Mm-hmm. But they also had some additional content, like additional easy and hard modes, and you could put, use the spin dash in Sonic 1. Basically mm-hmm. just some interesting like bonus stuff. 
But what made Sonic Jam fascinating <laughs> was it also had a bonus. It also had a bonus 3D mode, like a 3D world called Sonic World, where mm-hmm. it was like this little 3D environment that you could run around, and it had like oh. art galleries. Yep. And uh, movie galleries, mm-hmm. including like old like ads and like this weird like it, it was like this animated like short film called Man of the Year, where like Sonic, where Eggman like cosplays as Sonic and makes everyone hate Sonic. It's really weird. <laughs> what I need to look. I, this I up. showed it. To, I showed it to you once. Sonic but, um, Man of the Year. Oh, it popped right up. Yeah, but um. So, anyways, what um, uh, what Sonic world actually was was uh, it was a canceled was, proto- was. she's watching man of the year right now in the background no 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 yeah. i'm not why i'm looking at images oh, and, okay. and uh the animation's and Eggman's, beautiful he's in like a pink suit yeah i know but um i also see like a clip of him in the a picture of him in the costume and it's yeah it's yeah. cursed that's so <laughs> cursed no but um Anyways, what, what made... <coughs> Sorry, oh, I'm dying. But it was what made, um... <laughs> it's too cursed. The Sonic... What made the Sonic world thing fascinating was it was actually basically the remains of a prototype 3D Sonic game mm-hmm. that Sonic Team, like, the official Sonic Team was working on at the time. Mm-hmm. And basically they scrapped the concept in favor of moving on to Sega's next console, the Dreamcast. Yep. So, basically, they added that as kind of just a little, like, bonus thing to go with Sonic Jam. Mm-hmm. And Sonic Jam, by the way, is an extremely expensive game these days. How much does it go for nowadays? Like, 400 bucks. Jesus Christ. That's why I own the Japanese version. Ah. But, um... See, I'd much rather buy a figure than... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but anyways, so following that, the Dreamcast, basically they moved all that development over to the brand new Dreamcast yep. in what would become Sonic Adventure. Mm-hmm. And Sonic Adventure was basically the introduction of the modern Sonic design with the longer spikes, the green eyes, you know, the thing that all the fanboys cry about every freaking day. Yep. But, um... Wait, people the game whine also- about that? Yes. Like they the whine about is, the eyes? Yes. Really? Oh, it's... Yes. Why? <laughs> because the Sonic fan base is ridiculous sometimes, but, um... That's, like, that's complaint-worthy? Oh, okay. Yes, up to them it is. <laughs> Jesus, I don't I, get it. I wonder if there's a fanboy listening who's just like, you don't understand the complexity of his eye color and ratio uh, to his... Uh, <laughs> something like that. They oh. complained about the boom designs, not because of what the boom designs were, because Sonic's arms were freaking blue. Okay, I gotta say, though, that did look weird that his arms were blue and Amy's were. Yeah, but that was the thing that they were complaining about. It, it, anyways, mo- back to Adventure. <laughs> so Adventure was also the first Sonic game to feature full-on voice acting. Yes. With the original Sonic dub actors, <laughs> oh, who were, no. I swear, they all hired them off the street. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, who were they before Sonic? Who knows? They I were mean, I don't up and coming people. Well, I know Ryan Drummond is probably the most well known. Because mm-hmm. I don't think any. I mean, the guy who voiced Eggman, uh, Dean Bristow, he passed away, unfortunately. But um, Aww. rest in peace. Knuckles went through like two actors throughout that period. Shadow Shadow's original VA was a friend of Ryan Drummond. Oh, really? Yeah. That's But, funny. I mean, honestly, I really like Shadow's original VA, but still. Uh, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. Yes. So, Sonic Adventure was cool because it was the first th- true 3D Sonic game. Mm-hmm. And out of all the 3D Sonic games, it was the one that tried to be a classic-styled Sonic game. Yeah. Like, there yeah. is momentum. There is, like, all sorts... Everything from the classics tries to make an appearance here. It was, Unfortunately, like, true to the classic gameplay. In it tried spirit. to be, And I, I respect it for that. But the problem... I, unfortunately, a lot of those concepts don't work in a 3D space. Like, obviously, the loops had to be automated. Oh, yeah. And Sonic Adventure is a very glitchy game, unfortunately. Uh-uh. 
Although, but it, admittedly, it it's was more like glitchy. the first like 3D game that they had really like not first 3D Sonic game anyway. Yeah, the first but. 3D Sonic game that they have even tried. So kind of give them a little the, give or take. The problem with Sonic Adventure is it gets a bit of a bad rap because only about four six of the game are particularly fun to play. Oh no. Cuz the game the game split into like into like uh six different character stories. Oh, okay. Oh, is it is it does it have big cat? Yeah. With the fishing? Yeah. Froggy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah voiced by Duke fucking Nukem. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so who are the playable characters in? I'm assuming well Sonic. So obviously Knuckles. Sonic um, Sonic was his, and his were like the, the high speed levels that they were a blast to play. Yeah. Tail, and then Tails was the second playable character, and his levels were the mess. also really fun. No, 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 no. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Oh, okay. Sorry. Tails is Tails's levels were similar to Sonic's. They were high speed platforming based, mm -hmm. but Tails's were all races where you had to race. Mm -hmm. Most it was always Sonic, but except for the final race, which was Eggman. Yep. And they were just fun because they were just all about pure on speed and finding... They were basically just shorter Sonic levels, but they were designed around finding the fastest routes. Yep. The Knuckles stages were treasure hunting. Oh, okay. And you had, like, a radar, and you had to find three stings. And it, it's not the most entertaining thing ever, but you know what? They were fun. The gliding around was cool. And they were quick, and they were very simple. Yeah, I remember the, the glide... Was this the game that had the pumpkin... Pumpkin Village, no, no, or is that? No. The, getting, am I, I keep skipping. <laughs> I keep mixing them up. <laughs> um, no, nah. but um, and then after Knuckles was Amy, and she Amy, yeah, Amy's more of a slow-paced platformer with a hammer jump thing. Uh, Amy's levels are kind of boring. She's aww. probably one of the more boring ones to play. Yeah. Then there was Big. He was. So the reason why Big's in the game is because Sega bass fishing was really popular. <laughs> Is that the real reason? That's what I've heard. That's hilarious. Would, considering Sega's choices on a lot of things, it wouldn't surprise me. That's funny. I'm surprised with, like, Amy's level. Why didn't they just make it, like, a beat-em-up? Like, just a hack and slash, like, boom, boom, no, boom. No. Just beat up Here's everything my thing. on the screen. Why wasn't Knuckles a beat-em-up? Yeah, he has Knuckles. I know, but... It, and Knuckles Amy should have been, enough. like, the go find people and then use her hammer to solve, like, puzzles or something. I Boom. just... I, I We're creating Amy, a better Sonic game just by now. Just... I think Amy's levels could have worked if the level designs were better. Ah, uh, okay. That's the problem. And then the final character was E1... 101... Oh, E102, the robot guy who has feelings. Gamma. Yeah. And, um... He comes back, His right? level... No, he, he oh. dies at the end of the game. Oh. <laughs> no, but um, his levels are all like... Uh, <laughs> That's dark. <laughs> they're, like, they're like shooter levels where you have to pew, pew, pew. aim and shoot things. Yep. And there's like a timer mechanic. He's okay. Yeah. He, not as good as Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, but his are all right. And big. But all the stories basically kind of... <laughs> you ignored me. Yeah, whatever. But it was all the levels Rude. sort of like kind of mixed together like the story they all have their own in unique storylines mm -hmm. but what's interesting about the storylines is each one is from that main character's point of view yep. so the lines are always different even in the scenes that are the same per story so it stays kind of interesting yep and then at the end everything combines together with one final supersonic level which would start a kind of tradition with 3d sonic games where they always end with a supersonic boss fight oh that's like where he turns yellow and the ks emeralds twirl yes. around him right yeah he turns yellow. <laughs> it was a gim it was a power up in the um classics and the early three D games it became just kind of a final boss thing. Mm. But Sonic Adventure was also famous for introducing Crush Forty to the series. Ah, and we talked about that on our last yeah. podcast. With uh they weren't Crush Forty at the time though, it was just Johnny Gioelli and uh June Sinoy got together because June Sinoy was the sound director for the game. Yep. And they basically recorded a song, which became Open Your Heart. Yeah. And then that song was later included on their first album that they did later on. Huh. That's cool. So, Adventure is a classic, and Adventure has been re-released about seven times now. Because <laughs> it was later, later re-released for the GameCube under the title Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut, and it was basically... <laughs> 
it had slightly better models, but all the textures were, like, gone. Like, all, a lot of the textures were gone. The lighting was worse. Oh. So the models look better, but the game itself looks worse. It, it, it's weird. Huh. That's <laughs> like weird. Like, the Dreamcast version, and it's glitchier. Huh. It's even more glitchy. Why? So then, that was also po then ported to the PC. Huh. And then, years later, that version was re re-released in HD on PSN and Xbox Live. Huh. And then that was then reported over to PC again. Jesus. So the current, most current version of Sonic Adventure is a port of a port of a port of a port. <laughs> so. That's chaotic. But, yes, That's it, Sonic yes, it is. for you. That's Sonic for you. But I'm not going to lie, the definitive way to play Sonic Adventure, to me personally, is the Dreamcast original. Yeah. Because the best, it looks the best. Hmm. And you're just Fox... holding that Dreamcast controller, and you just feel I, great. I love the Dreamcast. Oh, I can't wait till we do a Dreamcast podcast. But, nope. anyways, <laughs> so following Adventure, we had there was a like a short little spinoff called um, Sonic Pocket Adventure for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Oh, and it was it was basically a side-scrolling classic style game, but it was it was actually made by uh, SNK of all things. Huh. And it's actually a really good uh, 2D Sonic game. Oh, that's cool. And the team that made that would later go on to form the company Gimps, who would go on to play pretty much every handheld Sonic game from that point on. Huh, that's cool. But we're getting ahead of ourselves, because the next game after that was oh, Sonic boy. Adventure 2. Oh. This is the one that you're, you keep thinking of. This is the one I keep thinking of. <laughs> and this is also the one that's arguably... Better? The fan favorite Sonic game. Oh, okay. Of, like, the oh. late... of Because this was... So Sonic Adventure 2 was a very late Dreamcast game. Mm -hmm. And it was also a very early GameCube game. Ah. So a lot of young kids at the time, they're all adults now, but their first Sonic experience was Sonic oh, Adventure Sonic. 2. Oh, okay. And Sonic Adventure 2 is basically in... It is both an enhanced and in some ways downgraded version of Sonic Adventure. Because mm -hmm. it has much better graphics. Yep. Less glitchy. Yep. Although they a bit more automated. They got rid of a lot of the physics-based stuff. It still has a, a physics and a sense of speed. But it's more streamlined this time around. Yep. And they got rid of a lot of the adventure aspects. Like the open world from Adventure 1. They got rid of the adventure. Out of the yeah, adventure game. In, in a sense. Because now, now it's more linear. They go level by level. But rather than having all, six different stories with different characters. Mm -hmm. There's now in a, hero, a hero side story and a dark side story. Ah. Where you play as either Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. Yep. Or... The new characters, Shadow the Hedgehog, Rouge the Bat, and Dr. Eggman, believe it or not. Like, one of his rare playable appearances. Oh, really? I didn't really... I forgot that... I thought it was the robot. Maybe I'm thinking of a No, of no, no, Sonic you're thinking Heroes. of Heroes. You're okay. thinking of Heroes. But Sonic Adventure was notable for its incredibly... It was very story-heavy. Yeah. Like, this was the start of Sonic games having very in-depth plots. Yeah. Because isn't it, like... Sonic is being framed by Shadow, and, like, the government is, like, after him? Isn't it, like, Well, he's not gun? so much being framed by Shadow, it's more... It's more the the world just assumes Sonic is Shadow. <laughs> we don't even, even though they don't like. No, not really, but... Yeah. But, yeah, so, yeah, the Sonic's... The, the game literally starts with Sonic gets arrested. <laughs> yeah! And doesn't and you he, jump... like, jump out of a plane, right? And then yes. he gets chased by One the of truck. the most... One of the most iconic levels in Sonic history yep. is um, the opening to S Sonic Adventure 2, City Escape. Yep. He literally jumps out of the helicopter, gets a sheet of metal, and makes a snowboard. And then you snowboard down San Francisco, basically what's San Francisco. Yep. And the song, Escape from the City, or City Escape. One of the most iconic tracks in all of Sonic. And it's like a great opening level because it gets you right into it. Yep. And then we then we start to realize the problems with Sonic Adventure 2. Oh, no. So the Sonic stages are still a blast. Yeah. Like, they're super fun, super high speed. Then you get to the first, I want to say, Knuckles stage. Yep. And essentially, the Knuckles stages are identical to their counterparts from Adventure 1. The problem is, 
the radar, rather than showing any emerald piece, now you only have one specific one throughout each level. So uh. it's a lot more difficult to find them, and the levels are ten times bigger. Yep. So and there's a pumpkin a more... <laughs> there's a pumpkin level. Yeah. Also all the Sonic levels have rap music and it's a it's all the all the All knuckle the knuckle like... Yeah, cuz it's like the pumpkin patch rap or something. Yeah. It's like Pumpkin yeah. Hill or something. Pumpkin Hill. I I would sing them for you but I don't want to Please do. Sing. It's your shot. You're on to... Spotify. <laughs> Come on, sing. I'd have to I don't remember the lyrics right now. <laughs> but and then the Look final up. No, just kidding. The <laughs> then the final gameplay is Tails, and rather than Tails be Fun. so apparently no. <laughs> Tails was shoe apparently Tails was shoehorned in. He wasn't originally supposed to be a playable character. Oh, womp, womp, womp. Um, but his stages involve a mech walker. Oh, okay. So this is the mech levels. Got it. Yeah, his his plane, basically his plane turns into a mech, <laughs> and basically it's. The it's Gamma's levels from Adventure One only without the time limit. <laughs> so pew pew pew, but there's no urgency. Yeah. So it's more like pew yeah. pew pew. <laughs> there, so yeah, you can, you can already see this game is already not perfect either. Yeah. Now on the dark side campaign, Shadow plays identical to Sonic, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Rouge is the counterpart to Knuckles, and I believe Rouge was also not originally an intended playable character. Mm -hmm. But they need, and like, a I counterpart for... Yeah. And then I believe... And then Eggman takes the mech walking. But for Eggman, it works. Yeah. Cause... Like, Cause the Eggman's... He... Like, Eggman's, like, mech walker stages are... <laughs> that was just an awkward silence. <laughs> well, you, you froze over there. So. Oh, I did? Oh, well, I was yeah. yawning. So, I guess okay. it works that it froze. But anyways, because Eggman! But, um... Yeah, so the game has this really, like, darker storyline compared to others, and then... It, it's also, in my opinion, the point where the seri a lot of the series' later issues kind of start to arise. Ah. Like, the... Darker, more nonsensical plot line, unnecessary gameplay styles just for filling out gameplay time. Yep. Repetitive story structuring, like uh, I Sonic Adventure Two isn't an awful game, but I don't think it's aged nearly as well as some fans think it has. Oh yeah, it definitely has its problems. Oh yeah, and following that. There was also the Advance series on the Game Boy Advance, which was essentially... It was 2D Classic Sonic, mm -hmm. but on, on the Advance. Huh. And they each one got progressively more and more away from that classic style as they went on, but they're all decently fun games. Like, the first two are, in particular, my favorites. Mm -hmm. And then following Advance 3, we got the final... We got the next mainline 3D Sonic game. Yeah. Which was Sonic Heroes. Yeah. Which has one of the most iconic themes in Sonic history, because it's literally Sonic Heroes <laughs> by yep. Crush 40. Oh, and that's not even getting into, we forgot Adventure 2 had probably I, the most famous Crush 40 song of all time. What? Live and Learn. Oh, yes. The final boss and intro theme. Yep. But anyways, going on to Heroes now, so... At the end, Heroes is interesting because at the end of Sonic hey. Adventure, Shadow, uh, Sonic Adventure Two, Shadow dies, oh. and he was supposed to. He was supposed to stay was, alive. Keep going. No, he was supposed to stay dead, huh. but because he was so popular with fans, Sega huh. decided to keep take bring him back. Decided to bring him back. But at this time too. Sega was also... They obviously had exited the console market. Yep. So Sonic Heroes ended up being the first multi-platform Sonic game. Mm -hmm. The problem is, though, they only initially wanted to release it for the GameCube and Xbox. Yep. But Sony threw a... F Sony basically threatened them with, like... Because Sony was the most popular console at the time, they had a lot of, like... They had a lot of sway. Mm -hmm. And they basically the red and they wouldn't I think it was something like they wouldn't release Sega games or something on their platform or something 
And so Sega was forced to port Sonic Heroes over to the um, PlayStation 2. Yeah. The problem is, the engine that they had, that they could, that they were going to use, I, from what I remember, wasn't compatible with the PS2. So oh, they had no. to use a, a third-party like engine called Renderware. Yep. To uh, rebuild the games, and the problem is with Renderware, it's it's a it's a decent engine, but it didn't really. It, it wasn't like as good as the custom engines that Adventure One and Two had. Mm-hmm. And the problem is the significant power gap between the PS2 and the GameCube and Xbox. The PS2 version is a flaming pile of crap. Oh no! Is that the version you had originally? No. So I didn't play Heroes until the GameCube. Oh okay. So but have you, remember you ever how I said played it? the PlayStation version? I've played it once at a friend's house, and it, I it, don't <laughs> don't <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so that, that you know how I said at the beginning of the show how the um, if you were a Sony fan growing up, it was not easy to be a Sonic fan. <laughs> yep, that explains yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Considering the first Sonic game you got was a piece of shit. Hero. Yeah. yeah. But that not going aside from Heroes on the PS2, Heroes itself. So, this game is kind of infamous because it has 12 playable characters. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, though, that's a bit of a misconception. Well, because technically it's three teams in re- you yeah, play yeah, As. In reality, it's four sets of three. Yeah. And they all basically play the same. Yeah. Just slightly different. So, yeah. Sonic Heroes gimmick is you play as teams of three. As in the Sonic Heroes. So, for Whoa. Team Sonic... Team Sonic is obviously Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. Yep. Team Dark is uh, uh, Shadow, Rouge, and mm. Omega, who is basically just Gamma on steroids. Yep. Um, then Team Rose is... Amy. Amy, Cream, and Big the Cat. <laughs> Big the Cat. <laughs> and then Team Chaotix is... Um, uh, the bee guy. It's it's, Ve- it's Vector the Crocodile, Espeon the Chameleon, and Charmy B. Yep. Espio, Espio the Chameleon. Yes. Basically, everyone but Mighty. <laughs> well, 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 he didn't fit but, with three, so. Uh, I figured it's because they for the strength character, because Mighty's gimmick was he was super strong, and I figure uh, the, the crocodile probably made a better strength character. Yeah, it made more sense. Than yeah. a Sonic clone, so. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so anyways, besides that, so Hero's whole gimmick is throughout the levels you need to switch between the three different character types with Sonic there being speed types power types and then flight types and you have to use these three power types to get through the levels Mm -hmm. and the gimmick with the four teams are Sonic is like the most balanced Yeah. Amy's levels are easy the team dark levels are harder Mm -hmm. and then Chaotix had mission based levels yep and basically, you have to beat the game all f- with all four teams to get the final story, which finishes the game off. And that's where you fight, like, but the giant robot, right? You fight, like, Metal Madness, or whatever yeah. his name is. <laughs> Mecha Madness, <laughs> which is just was it? Metal Madness. It's just Metal Sonic on, like, gone rogue, basically. But, um... So, the, the Heroes has a... Heroes is interesting because it's actually very classic themed. Like all the human characters and dark storylines are gone, in favor <laughs> of a more whimsical. It's just Eggman. You go through very classic style stages, like the haunted mansion stage and stuff. Like, yep. And the soundtrack is super like pumped up and classic. So Sonic is basically they're out just trying to. Uh... I forget what Sonic's doing honestly. I think they're just trying to stop Eggman. Yeah. Who's actually who's actually Metal Sonic or something? Yeah. And well, then, isn't it? It's called Neo Metal Sonic, right? That's it. Why does he look yeah, like? That's... Why does he look like a Kingdom Hearts character? <laughs> that's what his. He looks yeah, like a know. Final Fantasy character, <laughs> like with his outfit and his cape. Yeah. And then like it's evolved. Well, I guess evolved form is a Metal Overlord. So we were both. No, no. Wrong. no it's first Metal Madness, which is a freaking. Uh, abomination and then metal overlord is like that same abomination but it flies oh my goodness yeah i'm like looking at it but (laughs) i'm just laughing at like why is why does he look like a final fantasy character i don't know (laughs) but anyways yeah so 
Sonic's is basically the, the stop Sonic. So the Sonic stops Eggman plot. That's yep. we've had yada yada times. yada. We know. Um, Amy's is they're trying to rescue Froggy and cream the rabbits. Chow's brother Chakola Chow, I, I guess. Yeah. It isn't <laughs> um, like it isn't Amy like trying to get Sonic to go on a date with her. <laughs> yeah, so it, that that plot that we that no one asked for, <laughs> and then team. So t- the mo- the majority of the story that matters in this game is Team Dark's. Yep. Because Team Dark is basically Rouge finds Shadow in a vault. Yep. And he's alive somehow, and then. <laughs> Omega's just in there for no reason, and then they just decide, we all hate Eggman, let's team up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and Shadow doesn't remember who he is, so uh, yeah, that's that's a plot thing. Oh, yeah. Plot to me. But then uh, later on in Shadow's plotline, they find Shadow robots and like a giant container full of shadows, and it's implied that Sh- Shadow might not even be a re- the real Shadow. Oh, that's getting deep. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's most of the plot happens in that's like the most significant plot that happens in Heroes. Dang. Um, and then Team Chaotix is essentially they're just waiting for a call, like a job, and then they get a call to go rescue someone who turns out to be Eggman because the Eggman you've yeah. been chasing the whole game hasn't actually been Eggman. Yeah, isn't it like that? Like, it's it's just Metal Sonic. Yeah, it's well, it's a uh, it's Final Fantasy Metal Sonic. <laughs> yeah, but then they they all fight at the end, team up, do the team up thing because yep. that becomes a, a staple of Sonic. And don't like and yada uh, yada. Who go, who becomes super? In it? Isn't it Shadow? So it's super? no, no. It's just Sonic. Oh, it's just Sonic. And then don't like Knuckles. Oh yeah, and like, tail, Knuckles they and Tails like get glow, bubbles. They just like glow, right? They just like they get, get bubbles. bubbles. <laughs> yeah, because the final boss fight in Adventure Two was Sonic and Shadow what team you... up for that awesome what? team up fight. What? But oh, yeah, my, so after I'm Heroes, so, I need to interrupt for a second. My cat, she's doing the thing where she pushes her water bowl, but I literally just saw her just like. Dink her whole paw into the water and then her shake it like what the hell? Why did it do it? You stu- now your she's looking. You, she's licking it your, off the floor. Your cat's kind of special sometimes, but what, what's wrong with you? Sorry, I just so, was like, what the hell? <laughs> anyway. So anyways, so after he- so heroes, it's not an awful game. It's definitely not as good as Adventure One or Two. Mm-hmm. I will give it credit though for its amazing soundtrack. It's the, the third game that Jun Sonoy directed. Yep. And um, you had we got two Crush Forty themes. We got the opening and the final boss theme was its own original theme called um, "What I'm Made Of," which is epic. Yep. And then we also yep. every team had their own individual theme. So we had like Sonic's had a theme, Amy had a theme, mm-hmm. uh, Shadow had a Team Dark had a theme, which was awesome because it was by Julian K. Oh, that's cool. And then um. Team Chaotix had a theme, and their theme was literally called Team Chaotix. <laughs> yep. Original. Yeah. It's a very catchy song, though. Oh. But following... So, obviously, Heroes... Oh, yeah, and also Heroes was the final game to feature the original uh, Sonic voice cast. Oh! Because uh, Dean Bristow had passed away shortly after that, and then by this point, the Sonic X anime was airing, and that used 4Kids dub. Yep. So, at some point around there, then, Sega decided to stop. It, why We might as well if I don't know the exacts, but basically Sega decided to be just more cost-effective rather than use their own hired talent. We might as well mm-hmm. just use 4Kids. And they basically just replaced the entire 4Kids cast. I mean, the entire Sonic cast with the 4Kids cast. Oh, wow. And boy, was this polarizing to the fans. <laughs> It's That's still kind of polarizing, even though I think the four kids cast got really good by the end. Mm-hmm. The first shadow, not so much. No. <laughs> I mean, I never was. I, I never hated Jason Griffith as Sonic. Mm-hmm. But I was never a huge fan of his shadow. Oh. But I just kind of, I kind of always liked his. Uh, I, I always preferred David Humphrey's shadow from the uh, classic from uh, the from a hero uh, Adventure Two and Heroes. Yep. But besides that. Shadow, basically. Shadow was... People call it a spin-off. I call it a main series entry because it's basically a main series entry. Mm-hmm. So Shadow was basically a follow-up to Shadow's storyline from Heroes, basically. Yeah. 
because Sega basically worked themselves into this mess. And they needed to solve it. Yeah. By giving him a gun. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> Shadow... A Shadow is basically... Gun. Shadow's game is, like, confusing. Yes. Isn't so, it, like, there's, like, two paths to it? Like, it's, like, a, right, you so, have, like, a, a light path and a dark yeah, okay. path where you, like... And is yes. it, like, doesn't it imply his, like, dad is, like, someone? Is it, like... Oh, uh, okay. We're, let's, is that let's, an implication? Let's, let's, or, is that just slow, a, or is that just what the let, fans think? No, no, no. <laughs> let's, let's slow down a bit here. Oh, let's slow down a bit here. <laughs> we're, we're ending it. We're ending this off here. So let's, We're ending this off in a chaotic game. We're gonna... Just so you know, guys, this is gonna be a two-parter, but, um... Yeah. Let's... We're ending it off with Shadow, because Shadow is a... A lot to unpack. Yep. So, so Shadow the Hedgehog is basically the whole game's plotline has to resolve the whole Shadow doesn't have his memories thing. Yep. So, the whole gimmick with Shadow is Shadow is unnecessarily edgy for no reason. <laughs> like if you, if you look at the case to Shadow He's the Hedgehog, Lord you, the Hedgehog. So my favorite thing is if you cover up the Shadow the Hedgehog logo with like your hands, it actually says Out of the Edge. <laughs> out of the edge um, so Shadow the Hedgehog is super edgy super dark you only play a shadow throughout the whole game hmm. now it's basically structured like a, like a 3D Sonic game is at this point although the controls are really slippery for some reason this time around Yeah. and the whole gimmick with Shadow is Shadow has like a morality <laughs> system where you can either be good bad or neutral Yep. The easiest thing to do is just be neutral and go from beginning to end of each level. The problem is, though, the game has a branching path system. Yep. And each, basically each stage has, like, a good ending and a bad ending, and the good ending leads to one stage and the bad ending leads to another, and the neutral stage leads to third. So there is, like, thousands of different combinations of how you can finish the game. Jesus. But to get to the final ending, you have to finish all... There's, like... So there's, like, five different ending there's five different final stages and then each has a good and bad ending mm -hmm. so there's like 10 different endings yep wow and yeah but they put a lot of time into this game also they did, i googled out really the sad. i googled what? out the edge out the, out the edge <laughs> and it, yeah. they, there's a lot of people who have photoshopped it to have it just say out the edge and out the, yeah i know i appreciate <laughs> I <love that>. it <laughs> but um <laughs> The other main gimmick with Shadow is they added swearing for no reason. Hell yeah. <laughs> like Sonic and Cause Cause it's Tank edgy, just... Bill. It's out of the edge. You I know. Swear. But there's like so many random points where they're just like, like, damn it. <laughs> or like, I'll send you to hell. <laughs> it's like <laughs> the most juvenile swears, wait, too. It's wait, like... does Shadow say fuck? No, no, no. They, they don't go that far. Damn it. It's like, damn it. Why not? They, they why not? Why Shadow? Because it would get an M rating, and no, they wanted a T rating, not an M rating. It should have been an M. It's Shadow, not should, even, it's, Shadow should have said fuck. By by border, by there's fan fiction for that, Alex. Ew, I don't want to um, know. Yeah. But um, by modern standards, th this game's borderline E10. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. yeah so the true. other, the other gimmick is. They added, like, weapons and guns to Shadow's <laughs> arsenal. <laughs> yep. And Sorry. vehicles. Now, the vehicles control like shit. Like, don't Didn't he have, like, Those a motorcycle? Suck. Oh, yeah. It's not fun at all. <laughs> but, um... Why? He's super fast. <laughs> the guns, on the other hand... And the vehicles are slow. <laughs> <laughs> What's the but, point? But anyways, there's none. Oh, this anyways, game makes me laugh. It's just so stupid. This game is hilarious for how bad it is. <laughs> for how but, edgy um, it is. Uh, the funny part is the guns are actually the most solid thing that they made. Oh, really? Yeah, the guns control fine. They auto, they have auto aim. They, you don't really have to deal with them. They're, they're, they're fine. Yeah. They make they make the freaking multiple like health bar enemies like easy to take care of. Yeah. Because the, the homing attack kind of sucks in this game. Oh. But, um... Yeah, so now the story. The game the game itself is average. It's I won't say it's the worst thing I've ever played. It's definitely not the worst game in the Sonic series, that's for sure. Oh yeah, there's way worse. Right, we'll, yeah, we'll get to those in part two. Yes. <laughs> but um So 
Shadow is the first real notable downward step the series would take. Mm -hmm. So, the storyline literally opens with Shadow grimacing on a cliffside because he can't remember his past. (laughs) But he keeps having these flashbacks to events that we... Two events that we kind of saw in Adventure 2. Yeah. Particularly the girl Maria that he knew. Oh, yeah, the blonde lady. Yeah. But then, all of a sudden, the sky opens up and aliens, just out of nowhere. All right. So aliens are invading because apparently Shadow owes them, like, the Chaos Emeralds. Huh. Or something like that, and... Black Doom is the main villain, who and he's he's actually voiced by uh, Sean Chamel, believe it or not. <laughs> so he's he, it's Goku, <laughs> but <laughs> but um yeah, but it doesn't sound anything like Goku. Yeah, but as you get but the through fact the fact that it's Goku is just too funny. Yeah, I know. But as you go through the storyline, there's like three there's like three main like enemies that you can run into throughout the game. There's obviously. If you if you go for the true hero state like stages, you fight Black Doom. Mm-hmm. Uh, the neutral stages you tend to fight Eggman huh. on some of them, and then for the hero side stage, uh, for, I mean for the for the evil stages you tend to fight the Gun Commander, who's this guy who hates Eggman because I mean who hates Shadow for stupid reasons because I guess he was up on the space colony at the time. Yep. And then it's later revealed. After, because the true ending of the game is, the good ending is the true ending, because, yeah. of course it is, but eventually you face off against Black Doom, and then he reveals he is Shadow's father in a weird fucked up sense. So they dark dark fadered it, right? Yeah, basically, basically Shadow, he was I am when your she, father. <laughs> a well, no, it's more like alien. you. It was more like you were created with my blood. Oh. Yeah, because I guess worse. in the, when they were when they when Shadow was created in the lab by Gerald Robotnik, I guess it's revealed that Black Doom he made a deal with Black Doom, mm-hmm. and that's why Black Doom's trying to collect the deal or some weird shit oh. like that. But yeah, it's so stupid. Like yeah. everything about this game's plot is just dumb. Yeah, the whole aliens thing is just like what? Like you're just making the so Sonic universe more complicated than it already is. I will admit, though, the final boss against Devil Doom. Devil Doom. Yeah. Uh, where you play as uh, Super Shadow. Has some great music, because so, it's... Yellow Shadow? Super... Uh, he's more, like, silverish than anything, oh, but... He's, like... He's ro- He's gold. He's, like, a white so, gold. So... Another interesting thing about Shadow, I mean, yeah, you finish the game, and then it's kind of like, he basically, he quote-unquote regains his memories, but he also kind of, like, just throws them away, being like, my past doesn't matter anymore. (laughs) And it's like, okay. What was the point of this game, then? This game was pointless. No, it's because they had to walk themselves out of the hole they created. Yeah. And he, but, that, did they also confirm that he wasn't a robot then? Yeah, yeah. It's, well, yeah, because that's another thing. Because throughout the game, you you see the shadow robot. Because one of the endings, he thinks he's a robot. <laughs> one of the non-canon endings, he's like, I am Shadow Android. <laughs> created by Dr. A. It's like, what? What? Uh, what? Oh. What yeah, like, some of, the endings, some of the endings are, like, insane. Like, the whole game is ridiculous. Ooh. Although... I will admit, though, I do have a soft spot for the soundtrack. I know not everyone likes it. Yeah. It was also it was the last game that June, the last main game that June Sonoy did for years. Yep. And uh, we we got two more Crush Forty songs, including mm-hmm. "I Am All of Me," which is like this ridiculously like alternative metal like rock and song. Yep. Uh, we got a Magnify song called "All Hell Shadow." Oh, another yep, Julian I remember K that song. one. Uh, PM PM Five uh, Power Man Five Thousand did a song. Like the great soundtrack overall, and one of the greatest ending theme, <laughs> the end, the, the ending theme to the game. Like literally, the only reason to beat Shadow the Hedgehog <laughs> mm-hmm. is just to hear the ending theme "Never Turn Back" Blech. by Crush Forty. Yeah, it's you, it's phenomenal. You know what would have made it edgier? What? If it was just all my chemical romance <laughs> at the time. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> uh, for me, well, here's funny. We'll, we'll get to it in the in the in the part two podcast. But My Chemical Romance does tie into Sonic at one point. Oh my god! Okay, I'll be we'll, ready. I'll for save it. that for later. Oh, but boy. anyways, 
Yeah, so Shadow was a weird. Was basically the the. It, it was quite the turning point for the series because. As we're gonna end it here, but before we do that, um, this was like the yeah, start this... of like their kind of like way too complicated plot lines. Way too complicated like... plot lines. The the point where quality control went out the window. <laughs> um, uh, you'll definitely see that in the next game. <laughs> well, not not quite, because the next game we're gonna talk about in the next podcast will actually be the DS entries, because those came first. Oh, okay. Well, actually, technically the DS games came out before Shadow, but I think we should talk about them after in the yeah, next podcast. Yeah, as, like, a, a collective whole. Yeah. But uh, we're going to end it off here because, oh boy, we got a lot to say with the next, with the rest, yeah. the rest of them. Yeah, and you, like, <laughs> and you said that you could brush through all the 3D games. <laughs> well, I, I do not I, believe you. Yeah. No. If you if you didn't get distracted every five minutes by something, we could have I could have done it. I'm sorry that I have a chaotic cat who just decided to go in the water for no reason. <laughs> okay. You know, well, anyways, guys. Our cats back home aren't chaotic. Mine is chaotic. It's hard to focus. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So we're gonna. This is gonna be our first two-parter, guys. Like next week's episode, we're gonna continue this on with Sonic Part Two. So, anyways, guys, the Gaming and Collecting Podcast is an <laughs> Anchor Podcast production, and you can easily find us on Apple Podcast or Spotify Podcast, along with all your other spot your podcasting platforms. Um, that was a mouthful. And anyways, guys, yep, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Better you than me. <laughs> yep. Yep. But Just anyways, make me guys, say it one episode, and it will take twenty times longer. <laughs> yes, it probably will. But anyways, guys, thanks for joining us as we discuss the games that shaped us. We'll see you again in Sonic Part 2. See you in Part 2! Alright, see you guys later. Woo! Bye!